Hey everyone, welcome back to another unboxing video. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Hammer Collection Gallimimus from the first Jurassic World. Um, here are some promo images, and obviously the, the famous scene from the first movie of the Gallimimus flock running. Uh, next, we're gonna be taking a look at the Skirmisher from Halo Infinite. This is obviously the World of Halo line that Jazzwares or Wicked Cool Toys has been making. Um, but there you can see the promo images of the other figures, same as the last couple figures. And then we're going to be taking a look at the really cool um, Bandai SH Monster Arts Godzilla from the Final Wars film. And you can see right there I'm pointing out 2004. And one thing you know is that the box is actually empty. I decided to take the figure out because I just really wanted to, <laughs> to handle it, to play with it. But yeah, so there we go. And there's some promo images in the back of the figure. Um, some really nice poses um, we'll, we'll show off. Uh, this figure is really well articulated, but again, you'll see that in a second. And then just moving some boxes out the way, I'm going to show you the really awesome Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. Obviously, again, from the original Jurassic Park. And um, I mean, you'll hear me talk about it later, but man, this figure ended up really, really good. And there's a promo image of the figure, a CGI render. Another one of the full figure and then obviously the famous scene from the first Jurassic Park when dinosaurs ruled the earth. And here's a look at the skirmisher and just getting in some close up shots. I mean, you know, the detail, the sculpting and detail and painting is pretty, is, is pretty good. Um, it's nothing, you know, obviously it's nothing too crazy because as we know these figures are actually fairly small They're like in the three point something inch line uh, So they are fairly small But I think you know th that makes whatever detail is there really really appreciate, you know, it, it makes it really cool to see um, And yeah, I mean just like I said really cool design It's nice to get the skirmishers in Halo Infinite again We haven't seen them since Reach so that was really cool but to start off, I mean, a really solid base. You can see now it's the same base we've gotten with the other figures, but there's still a lot of really nice sculpting and detail and everything. So it's really cool to see that. And yeah, so looking at the figure itself, let's look at the articulation. As you can see, you know, the so with all these figures, you know, as you as you know, probably now, if you've been collecting these, I mean, it's mostly hinge, hinge joints and swivel joints. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, uh, kind of side to side and a lot of up and down motion, uh, that happens, but it's still, it, it works for what it is. Um, there is a head, there is a hinge joint for the head, although I would much prefer if there was a ball joint, but as you can see, you can still look down pretty far. You can see like the feather detail. And one thing I'm trying to point out here is that there's actually no jar articulation, which I think is weird because the other jackals did have jar articulation. So I don't know why this one doesn't. Uh, since it's essentially the same mold, I think, but or mostly the same mold, uh, obviously just with different armor. But either way, I mean, as you can see, the legs have the, it's the one spot of the figure that has ball joints, uh, and then we're back to hinge joints and swivel joints. But articulation is still pretty solid. The hinge joints do a lot, and it's it, at the end of the day, it's really solid articulation. Now, looking at the weapon, we have the Mangler. It's the same mold as before, but this time the painting is a little darker and a little more like the game. Uh, really good detail, though. As you can see, there's the blade. Um, sadly, it's not two blades, but I'm sure that's just for plastic not warping. But yeah, so he holds the uh, Mangler just fine. And as you'll see in a second, I'll, uh, he can put him on the base, get him in a cool pose. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons for the figure. And here we have the Jackal Sniper and the Jackal Major from Halo Infinite. Both the Grunt and Grunt Mule from the Halo Infinite line. And her wave mates, Master Chief from Halo 5 and Atriox. So that about does it for this figure. Let's go ahead and check out the next one. So here we have the Hammond Collection Gallimimus, which is a pretty solid figure. Painting and sculpting is really nice. Um, overall, I think it's definitely a nice figure. Uh, but one thing I do want to point out here, as you can see, the feet are really, really big. Normally, big feet don't bother me, but in this case, they're very, very large feet. But looking at articulation, uh, we can see that there's actually quite a bit here. And to show off, uh, we're going to actually look at the head. It can go up and down. Again, just like with the Halo Infinite line, there's a lot of hinge and swivel joints. 
and um, it can help the Gallimars get in a lot of positions. Now, one thing I want to point out is, that, as you can see in the mouth, there almost seems to be a ball joint because, as you you can see right here, I can swivel it side to side, and so I don't know what that's for. But regardless, the mouth can open up and close, and the neck is on a hinge joint, which you can get it to look down very far. Uh, and then get it to look up pretty nicely. You can swivel it around side to side and Yeah, uh, pretty good neck articulation for the arms again the same thing There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hinge joints and a lot of swivel joints that can help you get into certain poses The only thing is that it doesn't come with any wrist articulation But it still serves a pretty good purpose um, And then with the legs we get the swivel for the uh, for the thighs it can actually go in and out I don't know if I just showed that but yeah, there's also hinge joints and swivel joints no nothing for the feet just like the wrist and then with the tail it's the ball joint with the famous wire joint which can or the wire tail which can get into some pretty decent poses um, which is pretty nice but I'm um, looking at the detail we're gonna try and take a very close look here and um, as soon as I focus um, there's actually a lot of really good for such a, such a small figure there's a lot of really good detail here a lot of pebbling a lot of scale detail a lot of wrinkles going on uh, just you know a lot of muscle definition just a lot going on to really bring this figure to life and really make it feel you know a little more premium than what you'd see you know in their ten dollar uh, standard line plus the painting is also uh, really nice um, But let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons for this figure First up is the Stiggy Moloch from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom The Hammond Collection Velociraptor from Jurassic Park 1 The Hammond Collection Baryonyx from Fallen Kingdom The Hammond Collection Parasaurolophus from Lost World So that's about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next figure so up next we have the SH Monster as Godzilla again from Godzilla Final Wars and uh, just taking you know just a closer look at it I mean it's a really really good figure a lot of really good articulation but let's go ahead and check out some poses um, and just got in some pretty standard poses roaring poses and everything um, like I said the ball joints really help it a lot but they are very loose as you'll see in a second um, they pop off quite a bit, but you know, and just showing off some detail here again SH monster arts sometimes they can have up and down quality control, but usually Consistently their detail for these figures are really good painting can be a little hit and miss The eyes are a little wonky on this maybe a little too bright in my opinion I feel like they should be a little darker since in the movie It's always hard to see his eyes are, are always covered in shadow, but overall, you know really good scale texturing and the joints well you know fairly obvious i think all the detail helps kind of hide some of the joints or makes it kind of blend in a bit and yeah and overall i mean paint even painting for as simple as it is you know really gets the job done i mean the dorsal plates the dorsal spines have a bit of a bluish tint but it's not too over the top that it takes away from the you know how it's supposed to look you know which is supposed to be like a bone white in the film uh, but it does give it some nice variation so that it just doesn't look very plain. But yeah, and, you know, uh, I mean, I'd even say like even to the tail. I mean, one thing that SH Monster Arts continues to get like 100% right is the tail. There's always really good articulation and they're always able to hide the joints very well. But uh, speaking of articulation, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And to start off with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the mouth, which again is on a ball joint. Not my favorite joint for the mouth. I would just prefer a hinge, but it can swivel side to side. Um, and then there's obviously neck articulation, all kinds of neck articulation. It's very segmented so that you can really move the head and neck around and get in some very dynamic poses. But as I said, the joints are very loose. And as you'll see in a second, you know, they kind of pop off pretty easily. Um, but one thing I'm trying to show you off is that the they did give the neck a bit of a sleeve so that it can slide up and down so that you know you can really kind of get hide the joints and everything. And as you saw, you know, there's the joint kind of coming off, and that's how it's like with most of the figure. I think later on the hand pops off. Uh, but regardless, you know, like I was showing off, it the neck has this really cool sleeve joint where you can it helps so that you can move the head a little better, and then also you can hide it, uh, hide the joint so that it's not so noticeable. 
and it really creates a nice fluid kind of look for the figure so that it, you know it can look more natural instead of toy like which is still gonna look toy like regardless but the more they can hide it the better and then as you can see there's some torso joints there's two joints for the torso there's like an upper middle and then a lower and that just helps it kind of move and be more you know posable uh there's the shoulder joint there's a bicep joint elbow joint and then there's one in the wrist and again just helping it give just that much more of a dynamic pose I mean, you would think that those kind of joints aren't really necessary, that maybe that's overkill. But when you really take a good look at it, it does help the figure kind of be more of a dynamic, you know, get in more of a dynamic stance and helps you just get in just that much of a nicer pose. And then there's a ball joint for the hips, there's knee joints, and then there's even a calf joint and a foot joint. And I think I'm gonna point it out in a second right here. Uh, there's even like, again, another sort of sleeve that can help you kind of hide that joint in the foot. So that does you don't just see a giant ball ball joint in there or something, um, which is really nice. And again, you can just get a better look at the the detail and painting for the for the claws. And then there's a really again the tails are always well done. There's just a really good like just ball joint system for the tail that allows it to get into this really really I would say a very like this is probably one of their better tail curves. It just it can bend super far in without popping. Now it does pop off, and there's that trouble there but it's still you can push it in pretty far the only thing is that you actually can't put it actually can't really go up but it can still you know it can still go up it just doesn't go very far um, but yeah you can just see me trying to get in some rowing pose you can see the arm just came off um, but let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons first off is the Bandai uh Godzilla final wars with the SH monsters and it's just kind of cool seeing the comparisons um, but either way, yeah, I mean, really, really cool looking figure. Next is the SH Monsterized Gigan, again from Final Wars, uh, looking really good together. And that about does it for this figure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Hammer Collection T-Rex. And here we have Rexy herself looking really, really good. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to show you this figure. This is, probably, this is definitely what Mattel's best T-Rex that they've had. Um, and anyone says otherwise just just trying to be a hater this thing is fantastic But going and taking a look at a closer look at it We can see all the again just like the gallimimus. There's just so much muscle muscle texture muscle uh, like uh, wrinkles Scales, you know pebbles just all kinds of skin texture that they're able to cram to this very you know It's a very massive figure. So it's nice that you know that, that gives them the opportunity to fit in so much uh, but even then it's just it's like they you know they just went above and beyond I mean there's a lot of spots and there are some spots that you know aren't as detailed as you can see the food the feet are looking a little bit flat in texture but I mean going back to the figure I mean even the rubber parts like the tail I mean there's just so much going on and the painting definitely helps a lot uh, the painting helps bring out that de detail so much more but even then I mean just looking at all the little textures going off from the tip of the tail all the way up to the face and I like how there's just like a subtle change from going to the wrinkles to going to like this pebble texture that looks so good the te teeth are a bit stubby but you know I still I still like it. it doesn't bother me too much and then the glass eye which a lot of people have had issues with but I'm actually liking it as you can see right there it looks really good I like the way it just kind of looks like it's staring at you um uh, and yeah i mean of course sometimes it looks a little off but you know once you get in the right direction it looks good but taking a look at the the stomach the underneath texture again they didn't skimp out they still put in a lot of like nice detail they have the crocodilian texture um but yeah it's just really good and just like taking a look at the articulation like there's the mouth joint now sadly the the mouth joints are connected together so if you try to open the bottom the top will open not a big fan of that but you know it's still i mean it gets the job done it opens the mouth you know but i just i wish it would have been just a little more separate so that you could really control how the how the mouth looks when it's open but inside the mouth there's some really nice rubber rubber pieces like the tongue and those gums that just make it feel more realistic and i just really like that but moving on to the head and just closing up the mouth there moving on to the head Again, there's a really good ball joint. They actually implement a lot of solid ball joints into this, really giving it that just more range of motion. But there's a ball joint on that head, there's a ball joint in the neck, 
and together just creates a really good amount of our of motion uh dynamic movement for the figure the arms are on swivel and hinge joints for the shoulder uh it's a weird placement for the hinge joint but it's still you know you can get it uh, in and out the there's actually elbow articulation for that arm which is really cool considering how small it is there's even wrist articulation and then for the leg there's feet articulation there's the i don't i don't even know what that is like a knee and then there's a, the uh top knee that has a double joint and then you know i'll show in a second but you know then there's the leg is on a swivel joint that can also kind of move in and out uh just really creating again some really good motion for the figure um and yeah i mean it just again look re looking really solid now i'm kind of covering it up here uh but i'll kind of show it to you in a second so like right here you can see and bam just you know really good and then another joint that i thought was really awesome did not expect them to put in is this uh that kind of joint right here which looks really good this uh, stomach joint and then obviously we have the tail articulation uh again just it's on ball joints most of those figures are ball is ball joints which is nice to see a nice change and then the wire tail which could have been so much better I feel like it just doesn't nearly do enough uh, movement, but it's still, you can get in a, in a nice curve. I just wish it could do more. Uh, so I'm really disappointed, too, especially with how big it is. I feel like they could have done so much with the tail and it's just, it's just, it's not where I think it should be. But let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons. And here is the T-Rex from the, uh, I don't even know, the, the Roaring Cage T-Rex, the Indominus Rex, the Baryonyx, the Parasaurolophus and Stiggy Moloch, as well as the Velociraptor and Gallimimus. So overall, this figure is really awesome. Uh, I really like it, but let's go ahead and end the video. All right, and that about ends the video. Thank y'all for watching. I'd appreciate if you follow my Instagram page, Giovanni Arts and Collectibles. I'd appreciate that a lot. A lot. And again, thank y'all for watching the video. Um, these are really solid figures, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.